everybody. This is Kathy with Premier, and welcome to another We Mean Business. We have um, with us on the line today Mike Zimaretti. He's our VP of National Life, Life of the South Group. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing today? I'm great, Kathy. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. Hey, I want to ask you a question. You know, the sun is shining here. How's the weather down in Tampa today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's beautiful. I'm... Uh, uh, Kathy's kind of setting me up here. I told her that if uh, I disappear during this WebEx, there's uh, there's a reason because uh, there's a huge tropical depression moving in from the Gulf of Mexico. I'm in Tampa, Florida, and uh, it's been raining and bands of thunder showers and uh, the the lights have been flickering and the power has been flickering. So if I disappear, it's not because of lack of interest. And I hung up. I uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll turn it back to Kathy if you don't hear me anymore. But thanks for asking. <laughs> You're welcome. We're getting, we're getting the water we need but in buckets Wonderful. All, all at once. Wonderful. So, Mike, both of us have been talking back and forth, and a lot of agents always ask why. You know, why this, why that, and that's kind of mm -hmm. where we brought this information up. You know, yeah, products yeah. equal solutions, and how does that work? Because there's so many different questions out there that are being asked. I figured this would be a great opportunity for, for us to kind of go over some of those details. So I'm going to let you kind of start tell us a little bit what we've talked about this last couple of weeks to get this webinar started for us, okay? Well, thank you so much. You know, I, I'm, I'm sincerely, I've been thinking about this WebEx all weekend because this is my favorite topic. I've been in this industry 27, 28 years. Who's counting? Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm stopping counting because it's tipping my age. But uh, you get a little wiser as you get a little older, and you hear a lot. And as a wholesaler for different companies, I've been with the National Life Group now nine years, I hear a lot of things from top producers. I hear what works, and I hear what doesn't work. Doesn't work, and you know I have a lot of agents out there. Many of them are on this call today that I, I look as partner, business partners, and associates and friends. And it and it pains me when they're not successful or they're they're just stuck in a rut. And they they just say, Hey, Mike, you know what are what are what are the people doing out there? that's working. I mean, you tell me about all these successful people that are going to these trips and getting awards for all these sales. How the heck are they doing it? And um, and we're going to talk about that in, in, in today's session. So before I begin, I, I want to urge all of you on this call to mark on your calendar right now, uh, Monday, June the 20th at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's Monday, June the 20th. We are going to have a special guest on our Premier Life and Annuity WebEx. Her name is Jackie Freiberg. Jackie is a special gal. She is the author of a book about the trending uh, insurance industry and the cultural shift that's going on. And she wrote a book called Cause. And in that book, she has showcased the National Life Group. And Kathy and I thought it would be great to have her as a guest uh, on the WebEx on June the 20th at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to talk to you about where her thoughts are that the industry is going and why the culture shift in the living benefit story at National Life is so refreshing and how we've virtually uh, changed the way life insurance is being delivered in the industry today. For those of you that think Jackie's name sounds familiar, she wrote a bestseller a few years ago and the book was called entitled Nuts, N-U-T-S, and it was a book about the success of Southwest Airlines and how Southwest got out of that sea of sameness and broke away from Delta and US Air and American Airlines and everybody and did something really distinctly different that really either people liked or hated, but I think for the most part they liked. So I really urge you to attend that WebEx. It should be a lot of fun. So wherever I go, <laughs> no matter who I run into, uh, it's give me some sales ideas. You know, give me some insight. You know, how are people doing this? And more importantly, why why are they doing it? And why am I not successful? Or or you know, why do people dislike life insurance? So I think one of the first problems that we have to address, and we have to look in the mirror, and and it's not our fault, but it kind of is is the insurance industry has set us up to be transactional. And that means product sellers. We're, we're salespeople. And that has been going on forever. I was an ex-professional football player, fresh out of the NFL. And I'm not saying that to brag to you. I was a pretty cocky guy that was pretty full of himself. And when I got into this business, I said, I'm going to 
kill this. I'm, I'm going to make so much money, it's going to be crazy. And within six months, I was sweating bullets because people were running from me. They, they went from shaking my hand and wanting to have a beer and, and talking about you know, football and all this other stuff. As soon as I brought up what I did, I could see the change in attitude. So I've done a lot of research on that. And it's the transactional situation. There's two reasons people get a little wiggy about life insurance. And we have to understand this to take it as a sales idea. And, and so, well, why do they get wiggy? Well, if you even Googled this, why do people hate life insurance? And it's not that they hate it. Uh, I was corrected in the first year in my career. I told my manager, and some of you on this call have heard this before, the Zemeretti-ism. <laughs> I went to my boss and said, I don't know if I can do this anymore. People hate life insurance. I think they hate me. I hand out my car and they run like heck. And, and she laughed and she goes, Mike, Mike, you're wrong. They don't hate life insurance. They, they love life insurance. They hate paying for it. Well, why do they hate paying for it? Well, because it's an intangible. They can't touch it, feel it, eat it, smoke it, whatever. It, it, well, they got a policy that they can touch, but there's no immediate benefit. And the people that have delivered that policy usually we're on the pushy side. And we're taught pushy sales techniques like, hey, let's just take this application. I know you probably don't want this, but let's take your application first and get the underwriting out of the way. And then if they give us a good offer, let's make a decision. Let's delay your buying decision later. Well, that's crazy. That's kind of like selling somebody a house and saying, look, let's not worry. Let's get the mortgage financing out of that. Well, I don't know if I can afford that house. I don't even know if I want to live in that neighborhood. Well, don't worry. Let's get let's get the, let's get the financing out of the way and, and fill out these mortgage papers. It, that's it. Just the trend was pushiness, and people just don't like to be sold. That's why, you know. And I hate to use this expression. Sometimes people told me, you know, what's the difference between a life insurance and a and a used car salesman? And it's like, what? Well, there's no difference, Mike. They both push on push me push me to something I don't want because I feel that they're trying to. Uh, just make money off of me. So that, that, that's just one of the, of the issues. Life insurance is not seen as a tangible. It's viewed as a non-tangible benefit. So, you know, really what's in it for me? Uh, secondly, I, I just, you know, I don't want to be pushed around into sales. And thirdly, which is probably just as important, I don't want to be reminded that I'm going to die one day. Please. I mean, what are you going to do next? show me a prepaid funeral plan at age 35 or 40 and ask me what you want on my tombstone or my obituary, people just don't find, you know, solace or comfort in even the smallest thought or reminder of their impending death. So what has the industry done? Scare tactics, and, and a good friend of mine always uses this expression, but please forgive me, back up the hearse and talk about death, dying, did I mention death? and um, scare them to death. What would happen if, you know, what would happen, what would happen, what if, what if. So what we're going to talk about today is putting the why factor. That's where the success is happening with the agents across our great country. They are going out telling their clients, instead of selling them a product, or forgive the expression, product peddling, they go out and softly, and, and if you're going to remember anything today, the biggest coaching tips I can give you is simplicity and storytelling. And the storytelling makes it come from you. It's genuine. It's the truth. And what you're doing in your story is telling this prospect what you do and why you do it and why the client. It's always the why, the why. In the alphabet, the X factor, the X comes before the Y, which is the product and the solution, but you should think the other way. Reverse it. If your clients understand why they need something or why the product has been manufactured this way, and we're going to get into a little bit of that, I, I know you're going to have uh, significant, significant success. And I would dare say that when you demonstrate the why of why you're using a particular solution, and why it's so successful, people will look at it and realize. I think one of the under, understated issues out there is most people don't understand the significance of having life insurance, period, because of the way it's been delivered in the past. But more importantly, they surely don't know the significance of the new kind of life insurance with living benefits, including the new riders that we were innovative in 
in, in, in providing tax-free income guaranteed for life. So sales idea number one, folks, the why factor. Don't sell. Don't sell yourself. Don't sell a product. Differentiate yourself right from the get-go. So here's a sales idea for you that's phenomenal. A young gal with not much experience in California, Southern California, told me, I asked her, how you doing this? And she says, well, Mike, I'm really honest, and I tell people what I do and why I do it. And I just basically walk up to them and I say, uh, do you own, you know, after I we get into a little conversation with them, do you own life insurance? Do you have it in your portfolio with your investments? And they either say yes or no. And it doesn't matter what they say yes or no to, or, or whether they do say yes or no, because if they say yes, which is the best way for a prospect to put you off, oh, I've got tons of life insurance. My, my brother worked for New York Life, or my, my, you know, my, my golfing buddy used to work for Prudential. I've got life insurance. Thank you very much. I don't need any. She would say, that's fantastic. Um, I'd like to sit down with you at some point and redesign your life insurance portfolio because that's what I do for people. And let me tell you why um, they enjoy what I do for them. And she tells the simple living benefit story. She talks about the new kind of life insurance, you know, terminal illness, chronic illness, uh, critical illness and, and critical injury. And for those of you on the call that don't know what all that is, I urge you to talk to Kathy or approach me. We have tons of material on training on that. But you take all this material and you bring it down. You bring it down to simplicity and you tell a story. Uh, and it's as simple as this. I had a client the other day that I, I, I put him, I, I, I took his old policy and I updated it. I made it more current. I gave him much more uh, a lot more benefit, and I and I and he was able to, as a result of that, it gave him or her the permission slip to do other things that otherwise they were afraid to do, get more aggressive in their in their portfolio, uh, and, and do other things. So, differenti differentiating yourself is really the key because, as we know, we have a lot of competition out there. We've got banks selling life insurance. We've got securities people selling life insurance. We've got captive career people selling life insurance. You, I, I go to my mailbox every day and I'm getting a term solicitation from AAA or, or a credit card company. I mean, everybody's in the business, right? So how do you take this why factor? Well, um, you basically have to prepare to educate. Educate your clients in a different way. Not about the product. And that's the mistake, folks. If I just stopped here, uh, it should help you tremendously. It's not Knowing, I mean, you got to know your product, right? But you don't need to have the client know the product. That's the mistake. Everybody knows the product, so then they want to go teach the client the product, and then they sit back and they're amazed, like, well, how come they don't want to buy? How come they don't want to do this? I mean, didn't they? Uh, remember the old uh, <laughs> uh, the, the rebuttal? Well, obviously, you don't understand something because I have to explain this to you again because I'm just shocked that you don't want to buy this. So what you got to replace in your vocabulary, you have to understand mentally that, you know, why should why you, your client has to understand why should they they should have it? What's the difference between cash value permanent life insurance and term? Uh, why do I need a succession plan if I'm a business owner? Why do I need key man or buy sell? You've got to tell them why, because uh, they don't know. They really don't know. And, and tell them why living benefits are so important today. So let's look at. I don't want to verbalize this whole uh, situation, but I want to show you something that is really amazing here. This is a top agent in Tampa, Florida that closes nine out of ten life insurance deals every two weeks. And he's a top producer with us. And you'll say, well, nine out of ten, what, if he's so good, how come he doesn't close 100%? Well, um, the tenth, I've asked him that question. And he said, Mike, the tenth person was completely uninsurable. They loved it, too. It would have been ten out of ten. And here's a great sales idea. This is what he does. He, uh, at the beginning, when he meets them as prospects, he sits down and he does his fact-finding. When he's done with the fact-finding, then he comes back with recommendations on the second visit. Now, this is to take over their whole portfolio, so he takes a few steps. Then on the third visit, he arranges all of these. You know, he puts them in annuities. He moves some securities around, the mutual funds and, and some things. And then maybe the fourth visit, he does wills and trusts and makes sure that all their affairs are in order, which are very important. The last piece is what I'm showing you right now, and he calls it 
putting certainty, certainty back into their portfolio. He says to them, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it's been a pleasure doing business with you, and I think we've got your portfolio in order, and we've taken care of everything that you were concerned about in the fact-finding process, which was really simple, by the way. You, you want a quick coaching tip on fact-finding? Just ask a client or a business owner. It doesn't matter. They're one and the same. They have families. They're you know uh, an individual family or, or, or a business owner. They're the same. Uh, what keeps you up at night? Tell me about your family. Tell me about your business, and then ask them what keeps them up at night. And if you haven't heard what you need to hear, tell them what should keep them up at night. So Ron, and I'll name him, Ron goes back and he said, there's one last thing we need to do before we leave my office today. We need to put a shield around all the hard work that we've done over the last few weeks or two, three months. And what he does is either on a legal pad or on a dry erase board, he puts their net worth at the top. And that, that could be anything. That could be 500, 250,000 or 500,000. It could be a million to two million. Doesn't matter what that net worth is. And then he lists in here everything that comprises that net worth. That's the asset box, the home, the value of the business, the value of a vacation property. Uh, CDs, cash, bonds, I mean, you go on, any, any, any incredible, any tangible investment option or that's worth anything is in this box. And he says, what we're going to do, and then he hesitates and he laughs, and this is where you got to know your stuff. He says, we're going to put an asset shield just like you have a uh, security system around your home, and here it is, and don't fall off your chair, yes, it involves life insurance. And then he says, before you pass out and have that look on your face, and this is where the, the simplicity of this little elevator speech, the living benefits and the income rider, he tells them about the new kind of life insurance. Life insurance you don't have to die to use. Um, if I stopped right here as well, what, where are we going with all of this? It's all about conversations. People do business with people that they like, but more importantly, hey, I like a lot of people, and there's a lot of people I wouldn't do business with. Why? Because I'm a discriminating, fairly, a pretty highly educated guy, and I'm, I'm assessing their knowledge, and I'm thinking to myself, do I want this guy representing my interests, or this gal? You know, I do it in a bank. I do it everywhere, wherever I go in every transaction. I'm a little bit of a, uh, sometimes I'm a pain to deal with. I even did it with the air conditioning people last week, and I think I drove them nuts. But I want people to know their business, and it's all about conversations. And if you could stimulate conversations such as, wow, Kathy, I, I never thought about it that way. I never knew that that was a risk. Uh, thank you for pointing that out to me. Gee, that, that should keep me up at night because, no, I have not. I do not have a process where if I become ill and disabled, I've never, never really thought. I mean, there was another article I read one time that said, what if you don't die? And there was a big question mark. And I said, well, what's that all about? And it was scary. It said, hey, dying is horrible, but it's easy because... You know, it's over and people sort out the mess. Hopefully there is no mess and there's life insurance and everything's been funded. But what if you don't die and you're disabled or you're, you're embroiled in a battle to stay alive? One of the best conversations out there is, what do we all have in common? That's why I'm so successful with my clients, Mr. Smith. I point out to them that we all want to live for as long as we possibly can. But, you know, I'm in the reality business. Something's coming to get you and I. Something's going to take us out. The cruel part is we don't know what it is or how long it's going to take. Is it going to be a long battle battling some type of cancer? Or is it going to be a battle battling some type of heart disease or neurological disorder? Or is it going to be a conversation of, or, or combination of all of the above? And have you thought about what the dollar cost? See, we're changing the conversation before it was back up the hearse, death, dying, death, dying. Now we're talking about what people are really concerned about. What's in it for me while I'm alive? What's in it for my family while I'm alive? You know, and point things out to me. Why should I be looking to do this? And why is this solution better than any other solution? And at the end of my conversation, folks, today, I will, I will put it out there to you. You know, show me something that's better. I used to be an annuity guy a long time ago, and I thought the sun 
uh, raised and set on annuity products until I really learned life insurance and was corrected and said, this product does it all. So back to the, um, to the asset shield. So Ron tells a story about this. He said, look, this is what we're going to do. Today, before you leave the office, we're going to take out two life insurance policy, one on Mr. Smith and one on Mrs. Smith. And in this case, it's a $2 million death benefit. And if you've looked at our living benefit scenario, roughly speaking, 80% of the death benefit is available in a tax-free living you know, benefit scenario. 1.5 million of it, up to a maximum of 1.5 million, million for terminal and chronic illness. Um, 1 million for critical illness and uh, critical accident. But if we look at terminal and chronic, which chronic could be anything. It's not just long-term care, folks. It's car accidents, heart attacks. If you, can't, if you can't function out of two out of six, people always, when they hear two out of six activities of daily living or cognitive impairment, they conjure up a nursing home. Um, I always remind people, I was in a car accident three, three years ago that I was hit by someone blowing through a red light at 12 noon after I left the restaurant for lunch. I could have been killed in that accident, or what if I didn't die? Worse, I could have been grossly disabled and had to fight a battle. And I'm on commission. I'm on a small salary with commission. My DI would never, my disability insurance would, would barely cover, I guess it would cover the mortgage on my house, but that's about it. I'd, I'd have to dip into stave, savings, and if I couldn't go back to work, I'm in, I'm in financial disarray. I'm looking at a financial disaster. So with this benefit available, like chronic illness, I would have, you know, if I couldn't dress myself or feed myself or bathe or transfer or walk, you know, I, I'm in line for some of these benefits, uh, particularly on a mid to long term basis. So uh, looking in the box, here's the key. The key to the asset growth is to grow this money uninterrupted. If you were in a car accident or you're sick or a heart attack or, or anything and there's a shortfall of, because of that, you're going to have to start eyeballing all of these assets in the box and saying, I'm going to have to liquidate something. Maybe, you know, the, the one with the less in, impact. You know, and what if, what if the market's down at that time and it's not a good time to cash that stuff in? What if you're going to sell your vacation property or, or, or something like that, but you're, you can't because there was a dip in the real estate cycle like we went through 2008? What if, what if, what if? But if we put this asset shield around your portfolio, we've got up to, in this case, for this husband and wife, up to $3 million tax-free before they ever have to go into the box. I put out to you, they'll never need all that. And they could partially take some of that money, but the good news is it did what it was supposed to do. It created an asset shield here so that these assets in the box could continue to bake uninterrupted. That's the key to success in this scenario. This, ladies and gentlemen, has made this person a half a million dollars a year just in selling life insurance. He's a $2 million plus producer income-wise with securities and annuities. And he doesn't have a radio show. He doesn't have a TV show. Uh, he doesn't do dinner seminars. He just asks his clients uh, for the old-fashioned referrals. He does an appreciation dinner every month or every quarter, every three months where he asks people to come to dinner and he reminds them about what he does in his practice. And, um, and he asks them to bring... Um, to bring clients with them. So that is, you know, the crux of really what I wanted to talk about today is showing you some sales ideas and, and keeping everything conversationally simple. You know, um, even if you had a radio show, you do dinner seminars, you do meetings, breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, or you do one-on-ones, you have to have something to talk about. And, um, you better have something significant to say. What are you really going to, what are you going to do? And, and I think that's why I get excited when I talk to a lot of you out there. You have no competition out there because people are out there product peddling. They're like, look at this, look at this, look at that, look at this over here, look at this, look at the price on this. They circle something and the clients just befuddled. They just sit there and they look at you and they say, well, that that's cute. That's cool. But I don't know how that pertains to me because the agents never asked them. So fact finding is one thing, but I think the conversational of developing the why, asking questions, and I wrote a little thing down. Here's a scenario, a, a formula for success. Ask questions, tell stories. After you've told some stories, ask more questions. Then tell some more stories. 
And as you tell your stories, they're quick, they're short, they're simple, but zero them down. You know, tailor them. You know, tell me more about what keeps you up at night. How do you how do you feel about taxes? Do you feel you're paying too much in taxes? Well, yeah, I do. I'm a successful business person, and yeah, I'm paying way too much in taxes. You got any ideas? Yes, I do. I have a lot of ideas. I'll need to get a little census from you about you and your business, and get some ideas on you know what kind of income you know, what you do, and I'll come back with some ideas. I have an advanced sales desk that I could tap into. I can talk to Kathy Elkins at Premier Life and Annuity. Kathy and I do it all the time. Based on these conversations, she'll come back and say, I've got an agent. She gets so excited. He's got a dental practice with all these dentists, or we've got a chiropractic clinic, and, and his brother has one in, in another state, and they all want to do something because uh, a lot of agents don't realize that 70% of business owners out there have no succession plan in place, and if they do have something, it's some cheap term that they bought that they were sold with no thought that you know the, the, the death benefit dollar amount was just pulled out of the air like a million bucks or two million. You know, there was no rhyme or reason to arriving at that benefit. And um, you know, it, it's just a matter of asking questions, taking the information down, coming back with some solutions that answer the whys. Here's what other people are doing in your business scenario. Here's why they're doing it. So if we continued on and somebody said to me, well, Mike, you know, give me some, give me some sales ideas out there. Well, if you're in the business market, there's key man, there's buy sell, there's retained earnings. You may not know what that means. We'll teach you what that means. You know, some businesses get taxed if they don't take the money out and they leave it in the business if they don't take it out because they get taxed and their own personal tax bracket goes up. So they leave it in the business. Well, then there's a, there's a, uh, there's a tax on retained earnings, so they pay on that. If you come back in and say, hey, I, had, I think I have a way to lessen your tax burden on the retained earnings of your business, would, would you let me talk to your CPA or could I talk to you? These are conversations that develop the why. We're not going in here. See what we're talking about? If we, again, if we stopped right here, I haven't talked. I haven't, I haven't mentioned a product name. I haven't talked about interest rates. I've just told you the why, why, you know, why these solutions work and why the product works and why the product, how about this, why the product was designed. Um, there's qualified benefits out there to give folks tax leverage. How do, you, how do you start a conversation about qualified plans? You ask a question. You know, are you paying too much in taxes? Do you think you are? Why are you doing that? I, I will have a solution for you. Uh, executive benefits, premium finance. I can't afford. I can't afford to put the kind of money I need to put in. Well, there's there's banks and vendors that'll put that money in for you, if you're willing to pay the interest cost in that money. And I can explain how well that works. Would you like to look at that? And 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 you know why? The why is why does why does someone not buy life insurance? Well, a business owner might say, well, I like to keep money liquid. And the kind of, here's why I don't want to do this. Uh, the significant amount of money I'd have to put into that, I've looked at this stuff before with another agent that came in here and tried to sell me, and I just can't afford that. i got two kids in college, and i got to keep a slush fund of liquid cash available and uh, for my business, and um, I, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to stray away from that plan. Well, I, I, I've got a solution that other people use. It's called premium finance. And we have a new small business premium finance platform that we just did a couple of weeks ago, um, and then we have our traditional premium finance. And then there's all sorts of other ideas we could kind of go on. We have an advanced sales team. This is not made to be a commercial, but you blend it into your why. You, you, you blend it into how you differentiate yourself, that you're going to uh, you know, work with a team approach. And that's what's important today, too. This is a great sales idea for you. You want a great sales idea? Put together a team. Kathy Elkins at, at, at Premier Life and Annuities, Mike Zemaretti with National Life, get to know the advanced sales team. I can introduce you to them. The regular sales desk, Gary Lentz. So if I looked at your team, it would be you, Kathy Elkins, and, and members of her team at Premier. So that's two or three. You've got Big Mike. That's four. You've got two attorneys on the sales desk, advanced sales team. So that's five or six. You've got a qualified plans gal. That's seven. You got the advanced. You got the regular sales desk, Gary Lenz. That's eight. 
and we have 18 people on the regular sales desk. So you almost have a team, roughly, of 10 people that you can go back to. So you could say to your potential prospect, here's why, because here's the biggest why, folks. Why should I be doing business with you? Because people have come up to me in the past, make no mistake. They've asked me to buy life insurance. They've showed me stuff, and I've looked at the stuff, and yeah, this looked good, that looked good, but I never pulled the trigger on anything. You know why? Because <laughs> they didn't ask you why. Are you getting sick of hearing why? <laughs> But that's why people don't pull, they don't, they, they don't take action. There's no call to action because they just don't understand why it's in their best interest or significance. So that's another sales idea, folks, is put yourself out there as a team. And if you really want to really do well, which I encourage you to do, get to know a local CPA that you trust or an attorney because that's another value added that, you know, most people, as I said, 70% of business owners have nothing in writing. They have no secession plan. They have no buy-sell agreement. And you know what breaks my heart? I've seen it so many times. They basically look you in the eye and they say, well, you know, if I die, I hope my, my wife or my business partner does the right thing and work all this out. Well, what does that mean? Well, I've got a partner, and I hope his wife and my wife can agree to work it all out, and the three of them. You know, it's a, it's a tough scenario. So I think I've covered that. Um, I'm just going to refresh my notes here and see if there's anything else I can share with you today. But again, I, I think the, you know, teaming up and having professionals that you, a biz equity, you know, here here's another great sales idea, phenomenal differentiator. We now have the link to biz equity. And we, uh, we should probably do a, a WebEx. I don't know if we did, uh, Kathy, a WebEx on Biz Equity yet. But um, what Biz Equity does is for a small fee of $199, they give you about a 24-page report, 25, 26-page report on the value of your business. And you actually can go on our website and just plug in some information. I think there's seven questions. And you can get one for free that just gives you a number of what the business is approximately worth today. And I got to tell you, that's a powerful sales idea. If I went out into the business market today, I just be go, you know, it, it, that's a simple sales idea. I'd walk out there with my business card, just like the old days when people went door to door in businesses selling health insurance. Here's I'm Mike Zimmeretti. I am uh, I I work for Zimmeretti and Associates or Platinum Financial Planning Group, and I work exclusively with business owners like you. And I wanted to come in and introduce myself because I work with a lot of businesses in the area, and I just wanted to say hello. So the guy says, oh, well, thank you. Hello. <laughs> so then uh, that awkward moment, right? You transition. The transit. Do you have a second to tell me about your business? How's it going? I mean, think about it. Even if you're in the senior market, what do you do with the senior? If you're in their home, I've been on those appointments years ago as a producer. You look around the house, and you see the pictures of the family. And they go, oh, that's, that's a good-looking little girl. Who's that? Oh, that's my granddaughter. Uh, well, tell me about your family. Oh, we're from Michigan, and, you know, blah, 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 and how'd you come to Florida? I mean, there's, there's no want for conversation. Then finally, we get to business. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, let me tell you why I'm here. Let me tell you why people do business with me. So I, I think you get it. I don't want to overkill the why. But again, if you can take anything out of this uh, WebEx this morning, I can assure you that in my years of experience out there talking with professionals, uh, what works is conversations. Most of the top producers tell me, Mike, I don't even want to know how your product works yet. I just want to know the benefits of it because if I decide to put it in my, uh, in my medicine chest as I write my uh, prescriptions, uh, I will probably use it, but what I do is I just go out and I tell people what I do and why people do business with me, and I tell them, um, you know, what they basically, uh, what keeps them up at night or what should keep them up at night. So, Kathy, I, I think that's all I really have today. I'd like to kind of just open this up for anybody to ask questions uh, and, uh, you know, more of like a uh, study group workshop, if there's anything that... Uh, someone has a burning desire to know of, of a technique or, or something we've heard about or uh, that is really working out there? 
But I hope this has all made sense today again. I, I think uh, the last thing I'll really say about this is my best coaching tip is get away from the product transactional, look at this product, look at this, look at the features, come in, that, that's the solution on the back end. You know, you're putting the, what's the old expression, the horse before the cart. Get in there, establish why people are buying these type of solutions, why they're considering these type of solutions, and then, then you get to that X factor. So put the Y before the X instead of the X before the Y. So Kathy, back to you. Wonderful, Mike. I, you know, I had a couple people ask me and talk to me about this too, and, and if we can give you a product, it doesn't matter what kind of product we give you, but if it can solve, you know, dying too soon, protecting you um, against an illness or, you know, making sure that you have some type of money there to help you protect against, you know, surviving an illness and still needing that extra care or something that's actually going to be there to help you again with retirement planning, you know, and to help pay those extra bills that you're not thinking about because you didn't put enough money into your 401k plan or anything in that direction. Sure. And does it matter what type of package we put this into? And most of those people out there are going to say, no, it doesn't. If you can show me an idea that's going to protect me against all these things, great. What kind of package is it? Kathy, that was the, thank you so much for that comment because that's what I had written on another page. It's efficiency. Um, someone, and again, forgive me, I'm going to throw the Y out again. I know you're sick of hearing it, but you know what? <laughs> hey. Uh, well, hey, when an air conditioner company came to me a couple weeks ago when they were giving me that so-called $29.99 uh, you know, tune-up for the summer, and they always tell you you need a new system, I looked at them and I said, why? You know, the guy couldn't tell me why. He just, he just froze in his tracks and looked at me, and, and you, know, you, know what he, you know what he said to me? He said, what? that's what I was told to tell you. I was told to tell wow. you you needed a new system because when I went up there, it looked old. I said, yeah, but uh, tell me why I should do this. Is it going to – now, another company I talked to, they said, well, Mike, you know, let me tell you why you probably should get a new system. Uh, it's going to be more cost efficient. You're going to save so much on your monthly electric bill. And blah, 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 blah. And then they told me about the changes. So I really – I took these guys and I said, you know what? These guys know what they're talking about, and they were talking about efficiency. They said, if you invest in this now, and the guy scribbled it out. He goes, look at how much you're going to save on your electric bill. And then you get a rebate from the company for this. This guy really knew what he was doing. And when I'm ready to do this, he's getting my business. And actually, he's coming back next week. The other guy, I'll never return his phone call because he was a clown. He tried to sell me. He was a product peddler. And efficiency, back to everything goes back to my initial comments of why people don't want to do stuff like this. They just don't see these these non-tangible benefits to them. If it's now, if they see a tangible benefit like income and tax-free income, um, and we never even talked about the lifetime income benefit rider, one of the biggest risks. And you tell people another reason I like this product solution is because if you're going to live, you know, as long as you possibly can, what you should be worried about is living too long and running out of money. As you just said, Kathy, so there's, there's disability, we're talking about death, we're talking about illness, we're talking about positive stuff like living a long, fruitful life, but you've got to protect. It's about protection, retirement and protection. And I love okay. um, your point about efficiency. Any, any other questions out there? Or? We did have someone ask, what is the target age group to best take advantage of the living benefit features? Boy, that's a great question, and it yeah. really, obviously, with any life insurance package, the older you get, once you get over 65 and you get towards 70, 68 to 70, uh, it, life insurance in general, because that's the chassis that delivers it, the death benefit, you know, the present value of the death benefit delivers the living benefits, so it gets costly. Cost of insurance goes up. However, to answer that question specifically, and that's a great question, thank you for asking, because that's another reason of being able to design and work with Kathy Elkins at Premier Life and Annuity or work with our sales desk, Gary Lentz, in, in, in terms of designing the solution. Because the solution can be one of many. Number one, if I don't want the living benefits, that doesn't float my boat, but I love tax-free income because I know, because I now understand why people are putting a lot, again, why? Why are people putting a lot of money into permanent cash value life insurance plans? Why? Because they grow tax deferred 
at really nice high rates and caps, and I have the ability to take that money out at any time. Retirement or bribery retirement, I have no restrictions, tax-free. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So I would design the, the illustration and, and the funding of the product to be overfunded, meaning I'm going to put as much money. So what we would tell Kathy or Gary is I want minimum death benefit with maximum cash value at, in retirement. So we would build the scenario that way. Now, if a person said, I just want the living benefits, then what we would do is drop the cash value and say, I want maximum death benefit, minimum cash. We, we strip the cash out of it and say, we just want enough money going into this policy to keep it from lapsing and to have it current so that we could take advantage of the living benefits when we need them. And then the third way would be to be a happy medium of both. Let's just give me enough in there to build X amount of cash. I'm going to need two, three thousand dollars a month, uh, tax-free in retirement, or a thousand, or two thousand, whatever, whatever your needs are. And and that's what's great about the ability of this efficiency of this life in, life insurance product. It's truly, and we have them on all of our products, by the way. Whole life, universal life, fixed universal life. We even have term, but realistically, term's a little on the expensive side because we really have the term to convert it down the road to some of our permanent products. And a quick note about that, well, you know, you guys aren't as cheap as some of these really cheap term companies. Well, it's because we don't want to be, because when you have a cheap insurance, when you have a cheap term, when it comes time to convert, and the reason you convert is because you've locked in your insurability, you may have changed, and maybe you're uninsurable, or you may be standard now instead of preferred. They're, the cheap term products have a really cheap kind of conversion product that really has none of these living benefits and horrible and uh, then then you know with us you can convert to any of our products by the way quick comment before our webex today I talked to uh, another agent in Tampa and he said Mike these conversations work I said well I know they do I've been with the company for nine years <laughs> I'm just not making this stuff up he goes no 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 it worked uh, last weekend I, I had these uh, these Folks over from Taiwan, he lives in a Taiwanese community, and these are business owners in, in Tampa. And he goes, so they got into a business conversation. And long and short of it is, say, hey, what do you do, Derek? And Derek told him, oh, I wish I would have met you two weeks ago. I just bought this big policy with Transamerica. So Derek went into full mode. He goes, well, let me tell you why you might want to revisit that decision and work with me. And he told the living benefit story, and he told the guy why, why he – worked with us and this guy said you know what uh, I'm gonna put that on hold and I want to see what you can do for me because this other policy has some of that they're a good company and Derek said yeah they're they're a great company but let me show you the best out there right now and and I, I think that's that's beyond huge being able to uh, have those type of conversations that I mean you talk about sales ideas there's your sales idea. Know the living benefit story. Know, you, know, you don't have to know the industry other than you know, nobody does what National Life does as an entire package. You don't have to be specific, just an entire package. Any other questions? Nothing else popped up, but I do want to kind of give you an idea here. This okay. actually was my sister and my brother-in-law. They're paying off their mortgage on their house. So they just decided to take money out of their 401k, their retirement plan. I don't know where they got their money at. And they paid it off. And... We're talking about taxes and everything at this year, and it was kind of funny where she came back and she said, we got slammed $10,000 because we pulled that much money out of our account. That's what we had to pay an ex extra this year on taxes because they just wanted to pay off, I think it was a $50,000 into their mortgage plan. If they had one of these types of plans where you have tax-free income, deferred income, anything in that, that would have been so much better for them to take money out, pull money out of there, and pay yourself back on the loan. Be your own Those banker. Ideas. Absolutely. Be your own banker hey. ideas. One other thought, Kathy, just came to mind. I told you about the gal in Southern California. I forgot to tell you the second part. Remember when I said she asked people if they own life insurance and they said yes, and she goes, I'd like to redesign it? How yes. about when they say, no, I don't have any life insurance? You know what she said? What? What? She said, why? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the client said, well... I don't. I find it distasteful. I don't want to talk about my impending death, and I don't. I don't. I really can't put a number on it. So, or you know what? I don't know why. I just didn't want to. So you know what she said? 
She goes, let me tell you why most people put off purchasing life insurance. And, and by the way, folks, people don't know a lot of what we do, and we can't educate them in a brief period of time. That's why you tell stories. And the story would be, you need to make a decision because at some point you may become uninsurable, and then you'll call me or call somebody, and there's nothing we can do for you in this scenario because you're uninsurable or you're going to be so highly rated that you're not, it doesn't make sense to do. And then you're going to say the classic, I wish you would have hit me in the head with a hammer five years ago when you brought this up, and I chose not to. And the bottom, reason, the bottom line was the agent did not give the client enough reasons why they should take action now. So in closing, I think the why factor is asking the right questions and developing, you know, pull out all the whys. This is, this is what are you thinking? This is what I'm thinking. This is why people are doing it. This is, you know, assessing your situation. This is why, why I think you, you should have this solution. And it, it, it promotes a call to action. It really right. does. So, if you pull out for a do any, any last any last thoughts here? Because this this has been a oh. stimulating. I could talk about this for hours, and I'm trying to give you a little bit of everything. Of but but here's one other. I keep forgetting this. This is this is very important, folks. At some point, you know, America is getting smarter with their purchases. They're getting smarter where they put their money. And 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 I got to tell you, they're going to look you in the eye, and they're going to say. Why? Why this company? Why Premier Life and Annuities? Why National Life Group? Why that IUL with LSW that National Life owns? Why that? Why did you choose them? And you know what? That's that's just another sales opportunity. Let me tell you about. Let me tell you why. They're 167 years old. They were the first company that wrote a life insurance policy on a woman. They were the first company to innovate living benefits. They were the first company to promote and, and innovate uh, an income rider on an IUL. By the way, for those of you that are out there selling annuities and have been, you know how successful income riders are, are on, uh, on annuities because rates had you know, plummeted, but people want that paycheck for life concept. So that's another uh, why you know, that all could be answered with what we're offering you know, as a package with Premier. How's that sound, Gabby? Sounds great. Someone did ask about the email for, for Jackie and Cause, and yes, you will be getting another one of those. Uh, we can send something out to you today if you want. Just let us know. Just email us or give us a call. We can actually get you something for the next webinar. The big blast has not been out, sent out yet, but we can get you something if you're interested in that. And by, uh, the way, want, yeah? by the way, if I may, real quick, I think that's another answer to the why. When you get the bigger clients, and the, well, not the, but any client. I mean, they're all, they're all important. They're all important. But a lot of people really want to know more about the uh, solution that you are suggesting and who is standing behind these promises, these so-called promises to pay. And there has been some negative press in 60 Minutes about insurance companies that have not been paying their benefits and not going out of their way you know, to pay these death claims. This is another sales idea to say, not when you do business with me and my partners, because, and here's a book about this company being different than anybody in the, in, in the industry. They're not in that sea of sameness. They are different. You are going to want to look at doing business with them. I do business with them because of this. So I think you're really going to be able to leverage this book. I have people doing big, big overfunded cases that give them a complimentary copy. It's $15 if you buy them. And you give them a complimentary copy and say, read about the company that we're going to put your money with. or they do it when they deliver the policy. I want you to read about the company that you have this policy with who's going to, who are making these promises to pay out all this money down the road. So I'll, I'll conclude on that remark, but I really, really am looking forward to that WebEx with Jackie Freiberg. Me too, me too. Well, Mike, thanks you for everything today. I appreciate it. My thanks pleasure. everybody for being on there. Um, if anyone has any other questions they'd like to, you know, have answered, please feel free to give us a call. Ask your life marketer at 1-800-365-8208. And then don't forget, cause will be next um, June 20th. And if anyone wants some more information on that, please feel free to give us a call too. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. -bye. Bye.